Over the summer, we reported on a series of great white shark encounters off the coast of Cape Cod, Massachusetts. After that, an unprecedented mission set out to learn what these scary creatures do in the ocean. Jeff Glor went to sea with a group of scientists playing tag with the ocean's top predators. Jeff, good morning. Nora, good morning to you. The public has been fascinated with sharks for thousands of years, long before Jaws. But for all the interest, there's been a stunning lack of information. So we spent time with the people who say they're trying to put facts behind the fear. Is in real good shape. It's about a 15 foot shark, uh, a big robust shark. Brett McBride has maneuvered live 2,000 pound white sharks onto boats before. But he knew this time was different. This was more important shark than anything we've ever caught so far. For sure. Um, and so it was like until that thing was released, everybody was just, you could see it in their eyes, just so focused. I mean, it's like. Focused because what happened on September 13th, catching, spot tagging, and releasing a white shark was a first in the waters of the North Atlantic. How many sharks are there off the coast of New England? I think hundreds. A lot. A lot. They're supposed to be. There's supposed to be a lot of sharks in the ocean. They're the great balance keeper. They keep everything moderated, everything in order. I mean, if we put the future of sharks in jeopardy, we put the future of the whole ocean in jeopardy. That's why Chris Fisher started a nonprofit called O-Search, with the stated goal of bringing together the world's best fishermen and the world's best scientists. We don't know where they breed. We don't know where they feed. We don't know where they give birth until we figure that out. We can't even put policy in place to protect them and make sure they have a future. There he's gonna go now. Back in the day when these scientists wanted to learn about white sharks, they would go out and kill Great them all. Great job, fellas. Great job. And sample them. And now we at least have a system where we let them all go alive. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Fisher's aggressive system involves fixing those satellite-enabled tags to the shark's dorsal fin. Once released, they can be tracked in real time for five years, anywhere in the world. McBride is responsible for guiding the shark onto the lift, then inserting hoses into its mouth so it can breathe, his hands directly in front of 3,000 serrated teeth. You know, really, um, I, it, it, it's not as dangerous as it looks. Um, you know, I, Come I'm, on. Not, I'm not a thrill seeker. I really am not. I, I got to go home to a wife and kids that uh, um, I'm not going to go home with, uh, with just one less arm and feel good about it. Right, this has never been tried here. We're actually Off Cape Cod, OSEARCH partnered with Dr. Greg Skomel of the Massachusetts Division of Marine Fisheries. After a summer of increased shark sightings, he was hoping for answers. How is it possible we really don't know anything about them? Well, because we've spent a lot of time trying to figure out why they occasionally bite people and not necessarily how they live. On day one of this expedition, we boarded the main ship as the crew began chumming the waters. The conditions right now are conditions right now are perfect. The temperature of the water is perfect for white sharks. We just need one to show up now. But as we learned after three days and no whites, fishing is a study in patience. This trip tested everyone's. Why is this so tricky? Well, largely because we've never done this before, frankly. We know it works in other parts of the world. We just don't know if it works here. Then, two hours later, got it, got it. Just as the sun was setting, the buoy. they found out. Nice, nice shark. Right, we're just off your bow here. We, we, we can see you. We have a visual on you. Oh, oh, oh. Secondary, watch yourself. Move. Now that the shark is on the lift, this is when the scientists do their work. Blood and other samples, an accelerometer to measure speed, and of course the spot tag to pinpoint location. This is Jeannie. Jeannie, Jeannie! Jeannie in the water, everybody off. Come on, out. Go, girl. Great! <laughs> yeah! Can you believe it? <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Why does it mean so much to you? You know, I don't know. I just feel like the ocean's getting hammered. Doesn't have a lot of time left. It's the one place where I find, like, real clarity and peace. And um, if we don't do it, then who? There's no one behind us. I'd be helping them if they were there. 
These are cool guys. These are, these are cool guys and, and true adventurers, yeah. What have we learned since? Well, after they caught Jeannie and then released Jeannie, um, they found Mary Lee five days later, almost twice as large a 3,500-pound white shark off the coast of Cape Cod. And then Mary Lee was tagged as well and released. Um, so what, what's interesting here is that uh, where they've traveled, um, Mary Lee and Jeannie after the fact, Jeannie, uh, Jeannie hung out around Cape Cod, it appears, for a little while, and then when south, um, Mary Lee made a beeline to, uh, to the coast of Florida, it seems, as many people do during the winter. Yeah, wanted to get away from, music, wanted to get away from that boat. So exactly. the Great, white, the great to Whites collaborate and, and Absolutely. They, come they, together. They seem to be in yeah. cahoots together right now, yeah. Incredible story, Jeff Glor. Thank All you. Right, guys.